Hi and welcome to another video about the world of HDR. Today I'm going to look at how you record in HDR. And I'm not talking about cameras, uh, I'll probably do that in another video. We're talking about screen capture recording in HDR. So there are a couple of ways to do this. One of those ways is with the GeForce Experience capture thing. This can actually record in HDR, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk too much about this. This is going to be limited to people with video graphics. And actually it just seems just a little bit too basic. If it was the only program available, then this would be all right, but it's not. So what I'm going to talk to you about instead is a program called Action 4. It's made by, I think you pronounce it Miralis and you do have to pay for it. It's about. I think $20 if you buy the non-commercial version and it's like $27 to buy the version that allows you to use it for commercial reasons. Uh, so I went, I went with that for $7 more just in case I ever use it commercially. Seems like a no brainer. So in comparison to something like OBS, it is much less functional. So OBS, you have lots of different, you can set up lots of different scenes. You've got infinite amounts of control on settings, various other bits and bobs. In terms of how comprehensive it is, OBS is streets ahead of Action 4. However, something that OBS can't do, and that is this color space stuff here. Now I can't change it because I'm, I'm recording you with OBS. So the color space options here are the 709 and, and a lower one that's used for DVD and for DVD. And then we've got a color range of full or partial. You can choose a few other things in there, but this isn't any good for HDR. That's what the channel's about. So we need something that can do HDR. It's not a criticism. I'm not criticizing OBS. HDR is still reasonably new and they've only got a few full-time developers, you know, they, they, you know, they've got to decide where to spend their resources and, and HDR is still relatively niche. So I'm sure at some point in the future, they will bring HDR. So anyway, action four then. So you have a few different options as to what you capture. So for example, you can capture a game, which is mainly what I would use it for that actually grabs the game and captures it while you're playing. The screen will just grab a display. So with window, you can choose something that you've got open in order to, in order to capture. So for example, I could capture OBS. There you can select a, you can select just an area of the screen to capture and you can also record from a webcam or capture card. In terms of sound, you basically get two, which is you can choose a microphone and you can choose a sound output and it will, if you select it right, it will record on a separate audio track, track which is very useful. And it's something I re recommend you do. You can also select an additional audio track. Now what that will do is it won't create another track on the output file. It creates a separate audio track. If you've got a third thing, so, you know, your game is playing through there and that's your microphone and say you've got either music playing or you've got, you know, your friends on discord or Skype or whatever, you can record them separately and it will create a separate audio file. So when you edit it in resolve or something like that, you can drag that file in. There's limited overlay things. So you can, you can put your webcam on, you can use, you know, overlay graphics and things, but it's not got detailed customization that you can with, with OBS. Quite importantly, looking up, looking up at this stuff, this is where it differs mostly. This is where it offers things that aren't really offered by OBS. So first of all, your choice of file format is MP4 and AVI, no MKV. That can cause a problem if the file doesn't finalize properly. MKV, if you get a power cut, or whatever, the file, while it might not finalize properly, you can still import it into a video editor and basically fix it. With MP4, that's not the case. It does have some sort of system where it, you can recover MP4 files. I haven't looked into enough as to, to what it's actually doing, but it wouldn't surprise me if it doesn't record as MKV and then convert it to MP4 at the end. You can get OBS to do that, but that creates a second file, which this doesn't, doesn't do that. So, it, you know, if it can do that, that would be great. That'd be maybe some they'll add in the future. Uh, video size, you can basically tell it to capture the original or you can capture it in something different. So 
my monitor is 1440p so it will capture and record it in 1440p if i select original if i wanted it to be in 1080p i can select that there i can also select 4k but it will you know that will be upscaling so i don't tend to do that you can select your format 69 21 or 21 9 so you got ultra wide if you want you can capture in ultra wide that's that's great uh clone the original or 69 as i've got there video frame rate obs doesn't offer you this uh f frame rates on obs are capped at 60 here we can go up to 360 and 360 is just insane but 120 i i said it 120 but you could select 144 most gaming monitors are 144 with some going up to these 240 and 360 levels i think 120 is a good bot to do it do it at a lot of the high-end phones have now got 120 hertz screens including the ipad pro which is as i've discussed previously quite a good hdr viewer so i said it at that most of the games i'm playing i'm not get, getting up to i'm not getting up there anyway but you can always reduce that later you can set it at 60 if you prefer i do think that recorded gameplay looks a lot smoother at 120 than it does at 60 so i think it's worth having uh, you can do constant or variable frame rate a variable frame rate isn't particularly well supported in video editors so you might just want to leave that on constant frame rate um okay and then the most important one which you might have noticed is this one here hardware acceleration so you can select the normal ones. So disabled will just use, if you click disabled, that will use the CPU. If you're doing 720p, 30 FPS, a reasonably modern CPU will be able to manage that. If you've got something like a 3950X or a 5950X, you can probably get 1080p, 60 out of it on, in, most, in most games. If you're going up to 1440p and you're going above 60 frames, you probably want hardware acceleration. So NVENC, that's, that's, h264 nvenc hevc is h265 there's an M and there's an amd the amd equivalent is called vce and the, the the amd equivalent to this hevc isn't isn't too bad even on something like a rx580 that's actually pretty good but the normal vce isn't as good as nvidia it's okay for recording you set the bit rate high it'll be fine streaming not so much it's, it will struggle with uh, on, like on twitch it would struggle with that 1080 doing 1080p 60 on the amd equivalent and you can't you obviously can't you can't stream h265 anyway but what we're but what we're interested in is this one nvidia mbank hdr10 now i don't know if there's i don't know if there's an amd equivalent but but it should show there if it did so it's going to record it in hdr10 so that's basically what we're after and then up here we have the option to do like a live there's a live version so you can set up twitch youtube facebook i think mixer's actually in there like account manager still got mixer in it look so yeah you've got twitch youtube facebook smashcast and mixer but you can also do a custom streaming service so you could do linkedin on there you do audio only and there's a photo mode as well and uh, benchmarking thing which i've not looked at at all and there's a, you know a few other options there okay it won't actually let you record a game if you haven't got a game open so you'd have to open the game and then you, it says they press f9 to start and stop recording when it finishes it does take a while it, it sort of seems like it's freezing when you press f9 again it, it seems like you know you get the hourglass and it's just hanging there and you think well, what's it doing is it broken it hasn't broken it just takes a few moments to finish so don't sort of rush and close it or anything like that let it finish um, it has a file it has its own little file manager which you can set the folder for and it'll show you all the videos that you've recorded there uh, the preview is so you can see what you're actually recording it does switch back to the file manager all the time so i mean i'd probably prefer it on this but i'm reasonably happy with it when i'm just recording I mean that's really all there is to say about it it also has this feature for uploading to youtube however personally i edit the videos and then upload them to youtube depends what you're doing what your requirements are so that's it for muralis action 4 i think it's a good tool i think if you're interested in hdr it's worth getting relatively cheap it's a little lighter on features than i would ideally like but i think 
as a subset of overall features versus ease of use, it's 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 in a pretty good spot. I'd like to see OBS add this functionality. This is in the meantime, this is what I'm using and I think it's pretty good. Hope you anyway, I hope you found this useful and I'll see you in the next video.